Hey everybody, Zella here bringing you a new series. Today, uh, we are going to be playing Artifact Adventure. That's a little indie game that I really appreciate. I bought it years ago and I've only beaten it twice. I actually take it back three times, but I went back on an older save file and uh, yeah, did one of the other endings. So I've so the thing with this game is it's about choices and they're very well some of them are very interesting choices some may not really matter too much but um yeah, regardless of the outcome you do get some sort of reward uh some not so great others really good uh, it's it's interesting so i've played this game a few times and um i've done a little bit of experimentation i know there are other people who've done way more experimentation than i have and um to be honest it actually has been uh, about a couple months since i've played this game i'll be honest with you um yeah i was uh doing other things at the time and uh yeah, so it's it's been it's been a little bit, but yeah, it's it's a fun little game though. I have uh, some guides to kind of get me through it, um, just to and that way I don't stray off track. And in case I do forget something, uh, this is going to be somewhat of a walkthrough, I guess you could say. But all the guides that I, I am using are on the Steam community page for Artifact Adventure. And I highly recommend using those because um, th th those are some great people who have put in a lot of time and effort to provide this information uh, for you know, not just me, but you know, everybody else that that's played this game. And I do highly recommend playing this game, even though it's not really so popular nowadays. I don't I don't hear really too much of anything about it, but um yeah, you'll see some pretty interesting stuff about it as we as we go through, and I want to share my experience with with y'all. So, anyways, let's get started. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, you get the it's it's kind of similar to Final Fantasy One in this regard. Uh, you get to select your class. And um, that'll be your first party member. You can have up to four party members. So you have Warrior, which is one of my personal favorite classes in the game. It's similar to like a fighter. Uh, they they use the heaviest weapons, uh, heaviest weapons, heaviest armor. My apologies. Uh, swords and axes. They're they're pretty dang strong. They get a ton of HP, and they uh, uh, they're kind of slow they don't have any mp growth unfortunately although there are ways around that but uh, you generally don't want to give them any sort of spells that you know cost mp but i still really like them uh monk uh, it's basically what you what you'd expect you know they're um they got mediocre HP, they got the highest attack power in the game. Uh, their defense is, it's okay, it's not not the best. Uh, and just like with Warrior, their their um their intelligence is not really that great. But they have uh, they got some of the highest speed in the game. Although with my one of my last experimentations, my my monk didn't really get so fast. Unfortunately, it was kind of weird but um yeah well, you know what can you do that's see that's the thing with this game whenever you level up it's you're not gonna get perfect stats you can try and save scum to try and get the best level ups for your characters but honestly it's not worth it it really isn't um but yeah he uh the thing with him he does have some uh, he 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 does have some weapons that he can use, but honestly, I suggest that if you do use a monk in your party, spare fist. 
because he gets a double hit whenever he bare fist and I think he has a, a better chance of getting critical hits. If I'm not mistaken, he's actually the uh, the strongest. Well, yeah, he has the highest attack power. Um, but like compared to everybody else, he has um, he can uh, potentially do the most damage out of any other character in the game. So yeah, it's it's up to you. Um, I'm going to let you know what party I'm using by the end of this, though. Okay, then you got the Hermit. Hermits are interesting. The thing with them is they uh, they can equip some heavy armors and swords and bows and things like that. But the, the cool thing about them is they, um, whenever you use healing items, um, they have extra effect they do like let's say you use like a potion then it um normally whenever another person uses a potion it heals them for uh, you know i set them out if a hermit uses it it's like almost as if it doubles the effect of it you know what i'm saying so yeah that's it's like a alchemist in a way and some other games um so it's it's pretty interesting uh they have extremely high speed i think they're the fastest character in the entire game and they got the decent attack power their hp is actually worse than that of a monk they're kind of like a mage in some sense but um yeah the defense growth is not so great uh their intelligence is actually pretty good but um uh yeah uh if you want to use them you know go for it um, they make, they make pretty good healers. I mean, you don't have to put all your healing, um, spells onto them. It's, uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit more about that whenever we get into the game. It, it's, there's, there's a lot to this game. Now, explorers. These guys, they're, they equip light armor, they use light swords, and they can also use guns. Now the thing with guns is they are fairly powerful. Um, the only downside is you need ammo for your guns. And um, the ammo is actually quite expensive. Um, you know, but otherwise they have a pretty good uh, magic point growth. Their attacks are, their attack stat is so-so. Eh, uh, the defense is very low. Their intelligence is actually uh, pretty high. Uh, not the highest in the game, but that's, I'd say higher than that of a hermit. Um, and their speed is... Their speed is okay. I think they're one of the s slowest classes in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, unfortunately. Oh, well, let me compare. Hey, look at their stat groups. Well, they they tend to be about well, a little bit faster than maybe a warrior or something. Or it's about the same as a warrior, so it's not great, but it's not bad, you know. Uh, but yeah, they uh, you can make some sort of mage out of them if you really wanted to, and then later on in the game, once you get a lot of money to spare, you can you know, just buy a ton of ammo for them and and just go to town with the you know, the best rifle in the game. But, uh, yeah, that's that's about it for them. They're nothing extraordinary. I personally don't really like using Explorer, um, especially early on. They, they really cost a lot of money. I mean, so does Warrior, but Warrior is, um, in my opinion, is a little more worth it than Explorer. That's just my personal opinion. I'm sure there are people out there who love Explorers more than, uh, just about any other class. I don't know. I, maybe I'm crazy. You know, I, I am a crazy old man. But anywho, let's move on. Okay. Now, this class, the Shaman, they are actually one of my favorite classes in the game alongside Warrior. They Their HP stat is not so great. It's probably, probably the lowest in the game. But they have the best MP stat in the game. They have the worst attack 
um, attack stat in the game as well, which I mean they're mages. You're not really meant to you really use a physical attacks with them. Defense is like with the other <clears throat> classes. Um, they're they're it's not so great, but they have the highest intelligence stat in the game. Um, but I think there's one of the slowest. Uh, one of the slowest classes in the game, if not the slowest. Yeah, that's unfortunately that's that's the real down downside, in my opinion, is just their yeah their speed. It it, it it's pretty bad, but um, I, don't know, I feel like some of the other stuff, like the, the MP and the intelligence, it really adds up. Um, over time, they can only equip cloth armor, but they get um. Uh, they get some, or they can use like staves, you know, things like that. Uh, and, and those are, those are fairly handy for them. I mean, they, they already got high intelligence. And I think some staves actually, uh, if not all of them, I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Cause like I said, it's been a little bit since I played, um, they, I think the stay, some staves can boost their intelligence even more. So that's pretty nice. Um, and then we have, last but not least, uh, oh, there we go, the Dreamer. Now they have pretty good HP, uh, better than most of the other classes. Their MP is so-so, eh, attack stat, so-so, defense, meh, intelligence, meh, speed, Man, they're basically like the jack of all trades, master of none. Kind of similar to, similar to that of a red mage in the Final Fantasy series, you know. And from what I've heard, they're actually pretty good characters to use if you want to do a solo character challenge. Uh, there, there, there's only one way to do a solo character, and I will show you. But I am not going to do a solo character run. I am going to use all four characters. Okay, so. For this walkthrough, I am going to use my favorite setup uh, that I I highly recommend. But okay, if you want to, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh hey, you got to play it this way. No, that's far from it. But for this walkthrough um, alone, I am going to be using two warriors and two shamans. Now, what I am going to do with the two warriors. I'm going to have one warrior that's mainly meant for tanking. The other warrior, I'm going to have him with like the DPS boosting or damage boosting items that you can collect throughout the game. Uh, including the best ward in the game that you can get. Um, because with that, uh, well, I'll tell you more about that whenever we get into it. I don't want to just flat out spoil what it does but um yeah he's basically going to be my dps like, like my monk i guess you could say like i like monk it's just the defense and his his defense and his hp uh well i mean his defense is okay but i it's just warrior has a little bit better defense plus they have a lot better equipment draw in my opinion i mean i could probably get away with using a monk but I feel like um, a second warrior can be more useful than a monk for this particular for this, for the strategy that I'm going to be using. Um, as for the shamans, um, I'm going to have one shaman that's mostly going to be dedicated to um, doing damage with their spells, and the other one more so for healing. Uh, healing out of our party members <clears throat> and then um, I might have that the, the one that heals also do some sort of um, uh, like more also focus a little bit on debuffs whereas the other my attack mage um, is going to be uh, more useful with buffs uh I might mix and match. I think that's what I did on my last playthrough. I kind of mix and match a little bit. Like I gave some um, buff spells to or buffing spells to my attack shaman, some buffing spells to my healing shaman. 
Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's how I generally like to play. So yeah, let's go ahead and, well, not name him Mike. We'll name him Zell, because I like tanking in games. Chuck. I, I used to work with a guy named Chuck. He was actually my boss. Okay. Uh, for this guy. We'll call him. Vin. I guess. Why not? For this shaman. It's going to be my, more so my attack shaman. I shall call him Coral. And then my other shaman, I shall call him uh, Val. And here we go. Hey, not a problem, man. Not a problem. A kingdom. Not the world, just a kingdom. Your mission is to defeat the evil Swamp King. He's spreading his poison throughout the land. The heck? Oh. So what I do with these artifacts is throw it at him. Ooh, gifts. One of the following. Yes, so this decision is actually very important for continuing forward. Um, yeah, so from what I've seen and read, bead runners tend to go for an air airship since uh, you can do some sort of glitch with the airship and be able to skip a lot of monsters and and that sort. Uh, I'm not the type of person who likes using glitches to begin with for speed, um, especially for speed runs. I mean, I'm not really much of a speed runner myself, but um, but you can get access to another dungeon with the airship. It's not, it's not a very high level. You can go to it uh, really early on. I mean, you might need to gain one or two levels and then bam, you're good to go. Um, so, for this playthrough, I will not be going with the airship. I will also not be going with the artifacts. Because all that does is... It's just stat upgrades. And... Um, uh, one of them... One of those stats also gives you access to a spell, which... Acts like... Uh, I forget the name of this... Uh, Magic Burst. Uh, from the Dragon Quest series. It's where you just use all your MP to do dam AoE damage. And however much MP you have, I think, uh, that you use, it does more damage, if, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I didn't really test that out. Um, that's just what I read. So, I don't really go for that. If you're going for a solo character run, I probably highly suggest going with that one. Now, the one that I will be going with, though, is the Key of Time. Because that's going to give us access to uh, quite a bit of pretty good equipment. As well as the... Uh, the best weapon in the game. To the north. Speaking to yourself. Yeah, we're not going to be doing that. I am the authority of kings. I can lock any door sealed by the Lortonric royal family. So yeah, so what you do you walk see that that was an artifact that i just walked up to and depending on which character you have out at the time is um who's going to gain that artifact power now since i'm playing on keyboard um yeah let's see if you how you switch characters okay so yeah q this to switch um, is to go forward with the character selection. W is to go backwards. 
Uh, so whenever it comes to uh, you know th um, artifacts like that, that um, those color artifacts, they generally don't cost any MP. So I and they're I mean they have some they have some uses, but nothing extraordinary. Like with this artifact, I used the artifact authority of kings to open that door. That's pretty nice. Now there is a secret here that is actually pretty handy. Go up to this pillar. Aha! Now what do you do with said key? Well, we're about to find out. Okay, so we're going to head over here. And... Oh, wrong button. Open the door. Yep, there we go. Now that, that key was for this door. Now I... I know what this pot does, um, but I would highly suggest holding off until later before talking to that jar. Because it's a way to expand your money, but even though we're getting a lot of money right here, um, I mean, what you could do is just give them, give this thing your, your money, and with every... With every battle and every quest and pretty much everything that you do in the game, it adds interest upon it. Uh, but it's only a one-time thing. But if you if you were to just break it right now, um, I mean you get a little bit of interest back. Uh, I mean, you get over, I don't know, maybe a little over four thousand gil back. But, eh, uh, that's up to you. See now this one. Ooh, who are you? Oh no, not the jar goblins! <laughs> All of jar kind. Huh? <sighs> Fine. Now, the thing with that guy, that's a very important side quest, because it can actually give you access to some really good stuff. Um, some stuff that I use for the end game. And actually, here's one right now. If I can freaking get him. There we go. Alright. That's one. Then we gotta get one over here. <coughs> King's Return. So yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think this just teleports you back here to the castle. So yeah, what I suggest doing, just like with um, a lot of RPGs, like any cabinets or jars that you find, check them. Because they'll always, they'll always want to have something in them. Like this one, you got another jar goblin right here. So that brings us up to two. Now I'm going to try and come back here once I get... Um, five, yeah, five uh, jar goblins, because you usually get some sort of reward for every five goblins. Now, once you get toward the end of the uh, side quest, you'll need ten. Okay, let's talk to this guy first. Ah, uh, yeah. So, for my intents and purposes, intents and purpose. Says, yeah, I said that right. <laughs> uh, I am going to open this door with the authority of kings. Now, just keep in mind, before you do so, make sure, make sure that you uh, get the one that you want, because otherwise, that's it. You open the door. If you, if you, even if you never go for the item, too bad. All right, that's you just use the authority of kings to open that one door of your choice. I'll show you where the other one is. Where the ones. Yeah, key of time. There we go. That'll be oop. That'll be really useful. Now, if you wanted to get uh, the stat upgrades, that would be this door right here. And, uh... I think we're pretty much done here. Um, trying to think. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, here, I'll go outside of town real quick. So, the... So, that cave, which we will explore probably in the next episode, since we are getting kind of... kind of close on time, is where the airship is. Uh, the key for the airship, if you want to do that. Oh yeah, in case you're wondering, uh, yeah, I went into my menu, which is X, and, um, yeah, skill, and yeah, it costs zero MP just to return a lot in wreck anytime. Uh, unless you're in a dungeon, I don't think you can use it whenever you're inside of a dungeon. Oh yeah, so if you wanted to do a single player playthrough, um, you would go down here, we gotta go down here anyways, I think. Um, yep, there's a draw goblin. There we go. And if you talk to this guy, he will actually gel your companions, uh, but you'll get a pretty good amount of gold for for doing so, so yeah, you'll be pretty, pretty set on money for the beginning of the game. Um, yeah, for doing that, and yeah, so if you want to do a, a solo playthrough, um, yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, but you do get an uh, an interesting ending for doing so. So yeah, whenever it comes to quests and um, that dude talking to that dude and giving up your companions and some other actions in the game, you get multiple endings. Uh, or an ending for each of those quest lines. And you'll you'll find out more about that once you, you know, beat the game. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is... Yeah, go is buy a sword for both Zell and Vin. So if you want to switch between characters here in the buy menu it's the same way as switching party members the q and w so yeah they can they can get the sword it's fairly cheap uh bows that's for the um the hermit oh yeah uh oh yeah staves yeah it's it's a little bit less on attack power but hey more intelligence and that's what we want for them they cannot equip the buckler but these guys can and might as well get leather armor I mean we got so much money just to start out with it's you might as well yeah, get rid of the Turks all right, so we're pretty, pretty set in that regard. Okay, so yeah, you got medical herbs that restore a little bit of MP, cleansing tonics, cures poison. Uh, smoke bombs are actually very useful, and I will be taking advantage of that to for this particular guide. Um, because what I am going to try and do is get the ultimate weapon actually fairly early in the game. Um, not straight away. There's some things I'd like to do beforehand. But, um, yeah, I will definitely be taking advantage of that. And it will be make, it will make the game a lot easier. Especially when it comes to level grinding. It, it's, ri it's ridiculous what you can do. But for now, I'm going to hold off on it. And there's also some arrows there. Uh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Uh, arrows you can also buy in the game. and uh, Well, of course you can buy arrows in the game. What I meant to say was um, bows require ammo just like with guns. Okay, so nothing in there. Okay, what do you got to say? Wind, huh? Well, if I see it, I'll let you know, buddy. Hmm. 
Hm. <laughs> Don't tell him. Hmm. Well, remember that for later. Anything here? Nope. Yeah, this is an N, and, uh, and it's also a way for you to save your game or update your journal. Ooh, what's that over there? Let's, uh, actually, let's have, yeah, let's have you. 800 gold. Fine. So yeah, this is our first spell in the game that we can learn. Um, magic Blast. We, well, not Magic Blast, what I'm talking about. I am dumb. <laughs> okay, what I should have said was, um, that's our first artifact spell that we can get. But, um, the thing with our mages, they already come with a spell, which is, I mean, it's not bad, it's not great. It costs 2 MP. But, um, this right here... The blue tier. Now, starting out though, uh, I do give my healing mage at least one attack spell. I might give him another one, but I don't remember if I do or not. Not well, elemental, anyways. So yeah, I do give him this one since it is fairly handy. Uh, there is another one that we can get not too far into the future. Um. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to give that one to Garl. Right, in case you were wondering, we got these, uh, we can get, got a couple of these elixirs of life that boost HP by 10. Um, I usually don't give them to Ven, since he is going to be purely focused on DPS. I usually give them to Zell, just to make him even tankier. But there are also times where I give like one or two to Garl and Val, since their HP growth is the lowest in the game. And for this particular situation, uh, I think I might go ahead and give give uh, one to each of them, just so they start out with, you know, some HP growth. What's HP growth? Some HP. Okay. So since we are getting uh, pretty high on time right now since I was basically explaining stuff for this. Uh, I am going to hold off doing really any sort of real um, exploration for now. Next episode we're just going to get going to get pretty juicy. So yeah, uh, I am going to call it here and let's see if we can find any more art artifacts next episode. So. Thank you all for joining me, and I will see you then. Y'all take care now.